live from Atlanta, Georgia. It's the Zap Ballinger Show, where we help you find your direction through passion and purpose. My name is Zap Ballinger. I am your host. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We've got a special guest. Before we get to that, there are two ways you can interact with the show. We are streaming live via YouTube right now. So if you have any comments or questions, enter them into the comment box. We'll make sure to get to them. You can always Email me before any show, Zach at ZachBallinger.com. We'll make sure to ask those questions. Toby, thank you so much for joining us today. Zach, thanks for having me. I'm really excited. So, Toby, your episode will be actually entered into our career library where we're interviewing careers across North America just to shine a light for students and people that might be interested. So tell me about what you do career-wise. So my official career title, I guess, would be a neurophysiology researcher, um, which I'm assuming probably uh, is not a very common career title. Um, yeah. Uh, I have I no idea what that does, so go for it. <laughs> so, so basically uh, kind of combining uh, the neuroscience with, with the psychology, with the physiology, um, and actually working with kind of applied neuroscience technology um, to actually uh, benefit people in a, in a in an applied setting. So how did you learn about this career field? So I guess to back up to the beginning, I took a biopsychology class in undergrad and I, this time I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was a business major at the time, but didn't really have a passion for it. But I took this biopsychology class that I just found absolutely fascinating to just learn about kind of how, the electrical and chemical, um, how the elect uh, electricity and chemicals that are going on throughout our brain and nervous systems kind of in charge of creating the thoughts, uh, perceptions, experiences of reality, um, kind of making up everything that, that we experience. So I found that fascinating and ended up going to work at a research lab that utilized uh, an EEG uh, technology, which I'm not sure if any of the listeners have, have seen or heard of, of an EEG, it's basically a, a swim cap looking thing that goes on your head and is able to record the electrical activity uh, that basically emanates up from your scalp or emanates up from your brain to your scalp. So we're able to actually record the electrical brain waves in real time with this technology. So that's kind of how I entered into this path. And then I, I realized that there's certain neurotechnologies such as neurofeedback or neurostimulation that you can actually use to alter the EEG activity. So you can actually regulate brain waves that might be dysregulated in different uh, regions of the brain. It's fascinating. So how, uh, let's start from here because I'm sure a lot of people out there, you know, or they're still like, don't know what that means. So let's, back up a little bit. So if somebody spent a week with you, what would they be doing if they did a perceptorship and they followed you around for a couple of days? Yeah. So nowadays, you know, I would, you would see me doing uh, basically an assessment, which would uh, include doing a brain map. And in order to do, to do a brain map, you record uh, an EEG recording. So I would basically put a cap on someone's head, squirt some electrode goo into each of the electrodes, kind of swirl it around, make sure we have a really good connection. And then I would have someone basically just stare at a point on the wall for 10 minutes doing an eyes open recording. And then we do a, a 10 minute eyes closed recording. I would then on my computer basically artifact uh, the data, basically taking out uh, say eye blinks or other non-brain activity that's that's taking place there. And then the computer basically transforms that what's called raw EEG data into what's called a QEEG, a quantitative EEG. So that's uh, the sort of the brain maps that, that people might be might have heard of, might be familiar with, um, basically where it shows you uh, in kind of a, a 2D 2D images of your brain, shows like warm colors indicating uh, overactivity, hyperactivity, uh, and lighter colors indicating underactivity. So basically based off of that, we would then design a protocol using whether it be neurofeedback, neurostimulation. There's a couple other technologies I employ too, 
uh, brain photobiomodulation, which is using uh, like red and near infrared light uh, to actually stimulate the mitochondria in the brain. And audiovisual entrainment is another one, a cool technology where you're listening to, to uh, pulses, uh, uh, tones in each of your ears through headphones, and then uh, you're seeing flashes of light through glasses that you're wearing. So the audiovisual entrainment. Basically, uh, you'd see me doing, utilizing these different neurotechnologies and then doing follow-up brain maps and seeing how that actually has changed the, the brainwave activity. So it's sort of the QEEG is a, a great tool to assess how a person's brain is doing at any given time. And then we can sort of, in the same way, you know, a surgeon might use like an MRI or CAT scan to see, all right, where, where's the problem? What is the problem? I'd sort of use that, that QEEG uh, to basically tailor a customized uh, neuro hacking, neuromodulation protocol. Wow. Um, pretty impressive. So what is the career, what does the education path look like for somebody in this particular career field? That's a great question. And, and one that's not as clear cut as maybe some other careers, I would say. Uh, I studied psychology in undergrad. Um, and then I just attained a master's also in psychology. I have a couple of board certifications, both in, in QEEG brain mapping along with in neurofeedback. But as far as like to actually utilize this technology, there's not any hard requirements. Anyone could just go out and, and get this technology and work with people as long as you don't claim to be treating any specific mental health or uh, neurological disorder. So I'm not a licensed psychologist. I'm not particularly interested in utilizing this technology to, to treat specific conditions. My business is more oriented towards peak performance and kind of attaining uh, optimal cognition. So it's, there's, there's lots of different ways that you, someone could sort of get into this career. And I think as, as neurotechnology kind of makes its way more and more to the mainstream, because I think still it's sort of, you know, on the fringes where some people, I, I tell them what I do and they're like, you do neurostimulation. Is that like, like electric, like electroshock therapy? Like, you know, so there's still a lot of misconceptions and, and, but I think as, as this stuff becomes more and more prevalent in society, you know, I think we'll see my, maybe a, a more detailed uh, kind of curriculum with specific degrees and, and training programs. I've got a two part question just as a layman listening to you talk. So I just want to make sure that I've got this clear. So do you don't actually work in a research lab. You see particular almost like patients, right? That come to you with a problem. Is that I I, I, I've worked with this technology in all sorts of settings. So I got, I got my start in a research lab um, and then worked at a peak performance place outside of Seattle and then worked at a rehabilitation center in South Florida. So I've sort of seen the application of this technology in all of these different sort of settings. And I kind of got a good idea of what works, what doesn't, but I really got inspired to, to want to do my own thing and just kind of, my my interest definitely lies more more in the peak performance. So so working with people who you know the same people who go to your you know go to cryotherapy and high end yoga studios and shop at Whole Foods. You know people who who are really passionate about their health. That's sort of the the people who you know are are kind of my clients. Gotcha. So you have your client base. So somebody might come to you. What are they coming to you to have you solve with this type of technology? What What is the issue? Or are they like trying to um, maybe complete a triathlon or is it something different? It's a great question. So it, it really could be whatever. Um, as far as some people, uh, they're looking to improve their sleep. They're looking to improve their, their focus, attention, uh, memory. Uh, energy levels, uh, a variety of different things, but usually people who are, you know, somewhat, you know, they're, they're pretty healthy. Um, there, there's not necessarily a, uh, a specific, uh, 
problem or, or disorder that we're necessarily working with, but we're we're sort of just making tweaks to to enhance an already well working brain and kind of reaching that optimal state of performance. How successful is this type of technology? Yeah, so that's that's a good question. There's there's research on neurofeedback and neurostimulation that goes back, you know, for for several decades. This technology, it, it's it's very well researched, but a lot of that research hasn't kind of made its way into into the mainstream. So a lot of people are still somewhat skeptical uh, and wonder, you know, if if any of this technology really works. But if you you know, search the specific forms of stimulation, you know, in, in a PubMed search or neurofeedback, you know, you can find countless, uh, you know, uh, peer reviewed research articles uh, that validate this technology. What do you love about your job? I love seeing people. I mean, one of the coolest things is seeing working with people who have absolutely no belief that the technology is going to do anything for them. Uh, I saw a lot of that at the rehabilitation center I was working at in Florida, where a lot of people would come and, and not really think that they're going to experience any benefits and kind of just seeing them actually uh, use the technology and, and uh, experience such, such great improvements got basically kind of inspired me to really want to bring this stuff to as many people as possible. So, so really seeing just kind of how someone's brain uh, really is able to change and and improve and not saying that the uh, that kind of the neurofeedback or neurostimulation is a is a be all end all which you know it's definitely not it's just one component of of brain health you know addressing sleep and exercise nutrition all of those are super important factors as well um, ones that I address in in coaching but yeah I I just love seeing people who who kind of are stuck at a place and they don't realize it necessarily, but it's, they're basically stuck because of the health of their brain, because their brain is not functioning optimally on a biological level. So it's then preventing them from being able to show up in the world uh, the way they want to. What, um, you know, on the flip side, everybody that has a job that they love, there's always difficult parts of it. What is a difficult part of your job? That is a good question. I would say, I would say dealing with the fact that this technology is so, there, there's so many protocols, there's so many nuances that we don't know exactly what is going to work best for each person. So the brain map is going to give us a good idea, sort of a roadmap of, of what sort of protocol might work best, but the brain is so complicated and people are so complicated that there's so much else going on, whether that be people, you know, doing, uh, you know, going on different medications or, uh, you know, experiencing a variety of different uh, stress, you know, so, so it's, it's can be tricky to, to get the results that we're aiming for. Um, it might take, you know, some, some modifications of a protocol. Um, it's not, you know, it's kind of a both an art and a science. So I would say that's something that that um, basically, I don't know, makes it a little less clear cut, uh, a little less, um, you know, say that, you know, someone who does a career like, you know, you're you're building a house. And once you've built the house, you get to, you know, observe that that really good looking finished product. Um, you know, this this I feel like is a, it can be a bit more tricky to to get people where they want to to be on a cognitive level makes sense and was there a career, career you always dreamed about being when you were little that you could remember taking it back to the fourth fifth grade i feel like i went through the different phases that that boys usually go through i don't know i went i wanted to be an astronaut at one point or be in the nba i never never thought i'd get into this sort of work that I do, I, I actually never knew that this stuff even existed um, up until like my college research lab, right? I found out about this stuff. I, I remember in high school, I sort of got interested in reading pop psychology and neuroscience books, but I didn't have any clue that I could actually turn that interest into a career. So it took several 
years and different, you know, lab experience and job experiences to be able to kind of know, know, you know, that I could, could actually make a career out of this. Yeah. And one of the reasons I asked that question is, is because a lot of times in the career coaching profession, sometimes people's dreams are really right there in front of them the whole time. So you can relate certain instances. Um, for example, your astronaut uh, example is someone heavy into science. And so what are you doing right now? <laughs> You're doing something very heavily in science. So sometimes our dreams are that far back in the rear view mirror. So that's why I like to ask that particular question. Um, are you seeing these clients in, in person or is this a virtual thing or is it um, you have to come to the actual wherever you do your research at? Yes, yeah, so that's a, a good question. So I've, I've done kind of all of the above, but going forward, I'm going to be seeing clients in person in South Florida, in the Miami, Fort Lauderdale area, uh, I'll basically kind of be a mobile service where I'll actually go to your place of residence or your job and set up uh, these different neuromodulation sessions. So uh, I kind of got inspired by, I don't know if you've ever seen in, in cer uh, certain big cities, like I know Miami has uh, these like IV nutrition, these IV vitamin vans that you know, say if you're too hungover, you could just order one of these and they'll go, they'll go straight to your, your place and a doctor will come and set you up and everything from the comfort of your own home. So that's, that's sort of what inspired this idea, but I do eventually want to actually have, um, kind of a storefront, uh, a center in Miami. How long does these sessions generally take? Let's say somebody's out there interested in this uh, not the career, but they're interested in actually having this done for themselves. What does that look like? So a brain map is going to be kind of from start to finish. Probably the, the whole process will take an hour of just setting someone up uh, with the electrodes and getting those two 10 minute recordings, one with the eyes open, one with the eyes closed. And then for the difference, uh, actual uh, uh, sessions of neuromodulation, say neurofeedback or neurostimulation, usually last somewhere between 20 to 40 minutes. Um, and neurostimulation in particular, people really like because it's a completely passive process. So you could just sit back, watch a movie, listen to music. You don't have to be consciously focused on, on doing anything. Uh, it's a completely passive thing. So yeah, that, that I think will really end up catching on, uh, quite a lot in the coming years, just because it's, it's, it's not something that you have to be an active participant in, whereas something like neurofeedback, you have to be kind of playing this game, uh, this computer game and, and really intently focusing for like 30 minutes. So I hate to put you on the spot, but how many of these particular career, the one, the career you're in now, how many do you think are in the United States? Hmm. That's a good question. I mean, it, is there's it hundreds, a lot of thousands or it's, it, yeah, I guess it depends on how you want to answer that question. Cause as far as like people who utilize, like say the EEG technology, there's countless, I mean, neurologists, psychologists, psychiatrists, um, you know, hospitals use this stuff. Uh, so that technology is pretty, pretty widespread. There's a lot of EEG technicians, but as far as people that actually work with like neurofeedback, neurostimulation, it starts to get down definitely probably, probably in the hundreds in the U S um, as far as people who are actually like board certified in this stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's not super common to find, but definitely for people who are interested, probably, you know, if you live in a major metropolitan area, they'll, you'll be able to find at least, you know, a person or two who, who utilizes this tech. Reason I ask you that not to put the pressure on it's because it's refreshing. And I think to my audience, it'll be too, because guys, as you can see that Toby, he just said maybe a few hundred of these type careers in North America when what he's particularly focused on you can do anything 
you want to do if you put your mind to it and you're creative and you have a passion for it. And that's my whole point is there might not be many, you may want to be a neuropsychology researcher, but, um, and I even butchered that pronunciation, but uh, the whole point is you can do anything that you want to do when you take your talents and flush them out into a passion. And that's exactly what Toby's done. Uh, thank you so much for sharing this. Uh, how do people get in touch with you? What is the best way? And thank you so much for having me on the show, Zach. I, I really appreciate your insightful questions. Uh, as far as if people want to get a hold of me, um, you can shoot me a DM at Roscoe's Wetsuit Neuro on Instagram. Um, also on our website, Roscoe's Wetsuit Neuro.com. You can find out all about these different neuro technologies that I've been speaking on. You can also uh, book a free 15 minute coaching consultation to see if uh, neuro health coaching is for you. Neuro health coaching kind of encompasses talking about uh, kind of the, the latest neuroscience research backed tools and techniques uh, related to nutrition, sleep, exercise, uh, supplementation, um, all of those things to, to enhance your cognition. So if you're interested in that, I definitely recommend listeners go ahead and check out Roscoe's wetsuit neuro.com. And we, we will have an audio portion of this as well. So let's say somebody's listened to the audio. Could you spell out your, your uh, website for us or your social media link? Absolutely. So Roscoe's wetsuit neuro is R O S C O E S W E T S U I T N E U R O dot com or on Instagram, just the Roscoe's wetsuit neuro. Uh, also on Twitter, I should mention the, the Twitter uh, account for the podcast is uh, wetsuit podcast W E T S U I T. P O D C A S T. I guess we didn't even talk about that, but I do a podcast uh, talking to all these different professionals, clinicians, researchers um, in this same li uh, line of work. So you can also check that out. Um, you can find that through my through my website, or if you just search Roscoe's Wetsuit Neuro Podcast into whatever audio platform that you listen to podcasts in, you should be able to find it. Well, that's pretty neat. So if somebody's interested in this particular career field, then they can dig a little bit more into your podcast and see if it's a, a, a you know, it, it, obviously you're going to have a lot more in-depth information from people all around the United States in this particular career field. So that's very helpful. So check out that guys. We'll also link to the, at the bottom of the show, Toby, we did have one question that come in. It says, how does this differ, differ from hypnosis? I'd say hypnosis is definitely, I'd, I'd group that into kind of the same class of, of different neuromodulation uh, tools and techniques. So hypnosis is going to guide someone into uh, usually kind of a theta brainwave pattern, which is sort of uh, that sort of dreamy, kind of half asleep, half awake, where your, your subconscious, subconscious mind is very, uh, very able to be influenced and you're able to kind of, uh, kind of reorganize a lot of uh, past kind of beliefs, thought patterns. Um, it's a it's a super valuable tool. I've had uh, a few hypnotists on my podcast come and talk about it, and I think you know it's it's similar. Uh, I would say the the work that I do is kind of more um, rooted in in uh, looking at the specific uh, electrical brain waves and then modifying those brain waves. So it's not to say not to discredit hypnosis in any way, but this is more of a, I guess, I, I hesitate to even say a scientifically rooted approach because hypnosis has good science to back that too. But it's, it's sort of more of a targeted, uh, individualized approach, I guess, is the best way I would put it. Gotcha. Great question, guys. I appreciate it. Um, Toby, thank you so much for coming on the show, giving your time and feedback into, again, I, I think this is just so uplifting listening to you. You can definitely tell you're passionate about what you're doing. And there's not many people that do this particular kind of career field. I think it's always encouraging to have these unique, obscure careers on because 
again, it shows you guys you can do anything you want to do as long as you can bring value to the marketplace and that you love it and you're passionate about it and you have those talents. It's just a matter of taking those talents and funneling them into something that you love. Uh, thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you so much for having me, Zach. And yeah, I would I would echo your your statement as far as yeah, people just continue pursuing what they're passionate about, and it might not come quickly as far as making that into a career. But if you, I swear, you know, if you keep going and following what you're passionate about, at least from my experience, it'll eventually turn into something really cool. Appreciate that, guys. You guys have a great day. Until next week, this is the Zach Ballinger Show.